let's take a look at some of these quotient rule derivative problems. So uh, for the quotient rule, uh, we always have a numerator and we always have a denominator there. So if we're, uh, if we're going to apply the quotient rule, we start off by taking the derivative of the top function. So the derivative of the top function, which is highlighted in yellow, is going to be 1. And then we multiply by the denominator, which is x minus 1. And then the quotient rule always says that you need a minus sign here. And then we multiply by the top, which is x plus 1. And then we also now, and then we multiply by the derivative of the denominator. And the derivative of, the derivative of x minus 1 is simply going to be a 1. Okay, and then after that, we just uh, take the whole expression here, and then we divide by the denominator all squared. And that right there is the derivative of the uh, very first question there, and uh, I will definitely not simplify this, and uh, we'll just move on. All right, let's move on to uh, question number six. And for question number six, uh, the very first thing that I recommend is that you take these radicals, and you want to convert them into powers. So this will be x to the power of 1 half, minus 3 divided by x to the power of 1 half plus 3. All right, so once we've uh, changed everything into a power, now we, we can take the derivative. So y prime equals 2. Now, what's the derivative of the, the top function here, or the top part there? Well, the 1 half comes in front, and then we decrease the power by 1, so we have negative 1 half. And then I'll put that in a bracket, and then we times that by the denominator, which is x to the power of 1 half plus 3. The quotient rule states that you need a minus sign. And then we times by the top, which is x to the power of 1 half minus 3. And then we multiply by the derivative of the denominator here. And that will be 1 half x to the power of negative 1 half. Close the bracket. And then we divide everything by x to the power of 1 half plus 3, all squared. Now, this is uh, definitely correct. And uh, if you want to uh, leave it here, you definitely can. Um, it doesn't hurt to kind of change some of these some of these terms back into the radical form. So if I change that back to radical form, I have a one over two, and then this part here in green is just root x, and then times, and then x to the power of one half is just root x plus three, and then we have the minus sign. And then we have the open, open bracket there, and x to the power of 1 half there is simply going to be root x. So root x minus 3, close the bracket. And then we have this expression here again. So uh, this 1 half is really like 1 over 2. And then uh, this part here in green, that's really the square root of x. And then uh, we can divide this whole thing by the denominator, which is now root x plus 3, all squared. So uh, it doesn't hurt to uh, practice, you know, changing that back into radical form. But um, if you want to be, if you're okay with that first part, that's also totally fine. Okay, let's move on to the next question here. I need to find the equation of the tangent line to this curve when x equals to 2. All right, so we have one of these classic tangent line questions here. So maybe the very first thing that we can do is we can write out the equation of the tangent line in point slope form here. And uh, we're given that x equals to 2. So let's go ahead and find the y value. So uh, f of 2 equals 2. And basically, whenever we see an x, we replace all the x's with 2's there. So this would be 3 times 2 all over 2 squared minus 1. So that's going to be 6 divided by 4 minus 1. And that's going to be 6 over 3, which is, which is going to be equal to 2. So what that means is uh, the y value is 2, and the x value is also 2. All right, so uh, if I take a look at the y values and the x values, uh, we have a 2 for that y, and uh, this uh, obviously that 2 goes there, right? So let's go ahead and plug in those values in. So this will be uh, y minus 2 equals to m bracket x minus 2 as well. Okay, uh, let's erase all this. And now we need to find the derivative here. So our goal is we need to find the derivative value when x equals to 2. And now we need to apply the quotient rule here. So this will be a y prime equals 2. Now the derivative of the top is going to be 3. And then we multiply that by the bottom, which is x squared minus 1. The quotient rule states that you need to subtract. And then we can subtract the top, which is going to be 3x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the, of the denominator, which is simply going to be 2x. And then we divide this whole thing by the bottom, which is x squared 
minus one to the power of two. Okay, so um, I wouldn't bother simplifying this. Um, instead, we want to find the derivative when x equals to two, right? So uh, a new notation that you can write is f prime of two. And what that basically means is anytime you see an x here, we're gonna replace all those x's with a two, right? So I have a three here. All right, so if I, if I change this to a two here, that's gonna be two squared, which is four, and four minus one is gonna be three. Minus, if I put a two here, uh, three times two is gonna be a six. And then if I put a two here, that's gonna be two times two, which is gonna be four, all divided by. And then if I plug in a two here, if I plug in a two there, that's gonna be two squared, which is gonna be four, and four minus one is gonna be three. So I have three to the power of two. All right, so now we have uh, nine minus uh, 24, all divided by nine. Okay, so that's uh, f prime of two there. And if I keep on continuing here, I get uh, negative 15 over there, uh, divided by nine. And uh, negative 15 divided by negative 15 divided by 9 is uh, simplified to be negative 5 over 3. Okay, so if I, if I go back to my uh, question here, uh, my tangent line will be y minus 2, which equals to uh, negative, sorry, it's negative 5 over 3. Yeah, negative 5 over 3, bracket x minus 2. All right, so there it is. There's the equation of the tangent line for that problem there. Okay, let's move on to the next question here. So uh, instead of a tangent line, I have a normal line. So this is uh, still 90% the same thing as finding the tangent line. We just need to change the slope there. Uh, we know uh, x is four, so let's go ahead and find f of four. So we plug in four back into the original function there. So if I do that correctly, I get four on the numerator divided by the square root of four minus three. So this will be four divided by two minus three which equals to uh, negative four. All right, so the point that we have is x equals to four and y equals to negative four. So that's our x and y coordinates there. Okay, and then after that, what we need to do is we need to uh, apply the derivative here. Actually, before we take the derivative, let's just write this as x over x to the one half minus three. Okay, so now we're taking, now we're ready to take the derivative. So uh, y prime using the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top, so the derivative of x is going to be 1. And then we multiply by the bottom, which is x to the power of 1 half minus 3 minus the top, which is going to be x. And then we take the derivative of the bottom here, which is going to be uh, 1 half x to the power of negative 1 half. Close the bracket, all divided by the, the denominator x to the power of 1 half minus 3 the power of two. Okay, and then uh, then we need to find the derivative when x equals to four, right? So when x equals to four, we need to find the derivative. So let's go ahead and find, uh, let's go ahead and find f prime of four equals two. All right, so all these x's will be replaced with the four, right? Okay, so let's see if we can do that in our head here. So that'll be one. Okay, so if I have, um, if I have a four here, Actually, maybe it, help, maybe it might help if I just uh, insert the numbers here correctly here. So if I have the square root there, or the 1 half, that's really the square root of 4, and then minus 3. And then we have a, uh, sorry, we have a minus sign over here, and then I have a 4 over here. Okay, and then over here, I have really 1 over 2 times the square root of 4. And then all divided by bracket the square root of 4 uh, minus 3 to the power of 2. Okay, so there you go. Now we're in a little bit better shape in terms of evaluating this derivative value here. So I have a 1 there. Bracket uh, square root of 4 is going to be 2. So 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 1. And then I have a minus uh, 4 here times... Okay, well, square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, so I have bracket 1 over 4 at the very end. All divided by, well, the square root of 4 here, the square root of 4 is going to be 2, so 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 1, all to the power of 2 there. Okay, so a lot of work here still, so uh, 1 times negative 1 is going to be uh, negative 1. 
And then uh, I can see that uh, this four and that four, they just cancel off. So I have a, a negative one on the numerator. And on the denominator, I just have a positive one. So uh, this value will be negative two over one, which is just negative two. Okay, so that was uh, quite a bit of work there just to get the slope there. So uh, let me kind of box that right there. And let me kind of go back to our, our coordinates here. We know that the slope was equal to uh, negative two. So if I want to write the equation of the tangent line, the tangent line would be, would be this, y plus four equals to negative two, and then we have a bracket of x minus four. Now, if I want the normal line, we just take that value there and we just find the negative reciprocal of that. So that's gonna be one half bracket x minus four. So that right there is the equation of the uh, normal line there, which is this thing right here. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we have one of these uh, horizontal uh, tangent line questions. At what point does this thing have a horizontal tangent line? Okay, so uh, that happens when the slope equals to zero, right? So we have a horizontal tangent line when the slope equals to zero. So let's go ahead and find the derivative, so y prime. So uh, what's the derivative of the top? The derivative of the top is gonna be four times the bottom, which is x squared plus one, and then minus, and then minus the top, which is four x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom, which is simply gonna be two x. And then we divide that by x squared plus one, all squared. Okay, now we're gonna set this equal to zero because that's where we have a horizontal tangent line. But now we need to simplify the numerator there. So we have a four X squared plus four. And then uh, this right here will be minus eight uh, X squared. Okay, now regarding the uh, denominator here, when we're setting a fractional expression equal to zero, we only care if the numerator is equal to zero, right? So uh, we don't need to worry about the denominator in this case now. And then if we keep on simplifying here, I get zero equals two. Well, 4x squared minus 8x squared is going to be a negative 4x squared and then plus the 4. If I bring the uh, 4x squared over, then I have a positive 4 on the right-hand side. We can divide both sides by 4. So now I have x squared equals to 1 and x would equal to uh, plus or minus 1. Okay, so those are the x values, and um, so I have uh, plus or minus 1. And what I'm going to do now is I will go all the way back to the top here, and I will erase all this. So I know that my x values, where the derivative equals to 0, is x equals to plus or minus 1. And now I need to evaluate f of 1, and we also need to evaluate f of negative 1. All right, so we need to find the y values now, right? So all we're doing here is we're changing all the x values with one and negative one. So if I do that, I get four all over one plus one, which equals to four over two, which equals to two. Okay, so uh, what that means is one of my points will be one comma two. That's one of the points. And then if I plug in the, the negative one here, I would get, um, I would get uh, four times negative one, all divided by negative one squared plus one. This equals to negative four all over uh, one plus one, and that's gonna be equal to negative two. Okay, so that, what that does is that implies that the point will be negative one comma negative two. Okay, so uh, this right here is one of the points, and this right there is the other point where the, uh, where the function has a horizontal tangent line. So that was a good question there. All right, uh, let's finish off with, uh, I think we have some table questions now to finish off, right? Okay, so classic table questions here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative and then all after that, we're just going to plug in the x value that we're given. And in this case, it's going to be uh, one here. Okay, so let me see if I can shrink this a little bit. So let's go ahead and find h prime of x. All right, so the derivative of the top there is going to be a three x squared times the bottom, which is g of x, minus the top, which is gonna be x cubed, and then we times that by the derivative of the bottom, which is g prime of x, and then we divide that by uh, g of x all squared. 
Okay, so there is the uh, derivative right there. And uh, what we need to do now is um, we need to find h of one, right? So uh, let's see if we can cheat a little bit here. Uh, and you find h of one. So uh, I'm gonna change that x here and then I'm gonna replace this with a one. So what that means is anytime you see an x, we're gonna place all the x's with the one, right? So uh, if, I, if I replace this with the one, it's really one squared times three, which is gonna be three, right? So I'm gonna erase this and just write three. And then I have g of one. And then I have a one cube. So if I erase that, I just get a one, right? So one cube is just one. And now I have g of one. And then I also have on the bottom here, uh, g of one all squared. Okay, so this kind of helps. Okay, uh, let me kind of uh, write out h prime of one over here, here, over here, because I'm running out of space here. So this would be a three times. Now what's g of one? Well, here's g, here's one. g of one is gonna be negative one. So three times negative one minus one times, and then I have g prime of one. Well, here's g prime, there's one. So g prime of one is gonna be negative three. So times by negative three, all divided by uh, g of one squared. So g of one we know is gonna be negative one, and then we just square that. Okay, so with that, um, we just multiply that out and um, it turns out that over here we have, um, that's gonna be negative three and then plus three all over one and negative three plus three is gonna be zero over one and that's gonna be zero right there. So for uh, the very first question there, uh, h prime of one equals to a grand total of zero. Okay, so I'm gonna try my best to maybe uh, space out the next question here. I just felt like I, felt like I had, I didn't have much space for that question here. So uh, what I'll do over here is uh, if this is my function here, um, I'll try to write it on the side over here. So I have f of x equals to x to the power of one half divided by f of x. And then let's go ahead and find the derivative now. So f prime of x, which is the derivative of the top. So the derivative of that is going to be one half x to the negative one half. And then I'm going to times that by the bottom, which is f of x minus the top, which is uh, x to the one half. Whoops. Which is uh, x to the power of one half. So that doesn't look good. So one half. And then I would multiply by the derivative of the denominator. And the derivative of the denominator is just going to be f prime of x. And then we would divide that by the denominator all squared. Okay, so this is looking uh, pretty ugly here. And uh, I need to find f prime of 1, right? So uh, these are pretty tough because uh, we need to simplify everything here, right? So let's see if I can put a, a 1 layer. Okay, let's see if we can do the math in our head here. So uh, this part right here, all these x's are gonna be replaced with the one, right? So uh, this part right here, one to the power of negative one half. Well, one to the power of anything is always gonna be one, and one times a half will be one half. Okay, so, one, so once again, one to the power of negative one half is always gonna be one, and one times one half is one half. And then I have f of one minus then over here, this is really uh, one to the power of one, sorry, one to the power of one half, which is simply gonna be one times f prime of one, all divided by, in brackets, f of one, all squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what is f of one. Well, here's f and here's one. So f of one is gonna be two. So maybe I can re erase this and just replace that with a two now. And then ask yourselves, what is f prime of one? Okay, well here is uh, here is f prime, there's one, f prime of one is gonna be four. So I can erase this and multiply that by a four. And then what's f of one again? Well, f of one is gonna be two. So the bottom is gonna be two to the power of two. Okay, so now we're kind of in business here. Let's see if we can finish this off here. So what is one half times two? Well, one half times two is gonna be one minus four, all divided by two squared, which is gonna be four. 
okay and then uh, if we compute that we get negative 3 over 4 as a final answer there okay let's go ahead and move on to the very last question of this homework video guide so another table question here and uh, I'm given that g of x is down here okay so let's go ahead and find the derivative so I'll write that on the side here so g prime of x equals 2 all right so now I need the derivative of the top so the derivative of the top is going to be 2 times f prime of x and then we multiply that by actually this is going to be pretty tough for me to kind of write on the sides there so let me just kind of maybe write maybe I'll just write below here so uh, g prime of x equals 2 now the derivative of the top is going to be 2 times f prime of x and then I multiply that by the denominator which is g of x plus 1 close the bracket minus minus the top which is 2 times f of x times the derivative of the bottom here now this one's not too bad g of x plus 1 the derivative of g of x plus 1 is simply going to be g simply going to be g prime of x all right so that wasn't too bad and then we uh, divide this all by g of x plus 1 and all of that is going to be squared okay now I'm going to do I'm going to, I'm going to cheat a little bit here again so now I need to find g prime of 4 so I'm over here I'm going to erase all this and I will write g prime of 4 okay so anytime you see an x we're going to replace all these x's with the 4 all right so I'm going to erase all these x's and I'm going to replace all those x's with the 4 so 4, 4, 4, 4, and a 4. Okay, and then from here on, what we need to do is we need to kind of find these functions on the table here. So f prime of 4. So here's f prime, there's 4. So f prime of 4 is going to be negative 2. So I'm going to erase this now, and I'll change that with bracket negative 2. Okay, erase this. What's g, what's g of 4? Well, here's g, there's 4. g of 4 is going to be 1. So I'm going to erase that now, and we're going to put in a 1 there. So notice that we're getting all numbers now. All right, what's f prime of 4? Sorry, what's f of 4? Well, here's f. There's 4. f of 4 is going to be 1. So I'm going to erase that, and we'll put a bracket there as 1. Okay, let me erase all this. I have uh, g prime of 4. So here's g prime. There's 4. g prime of 4 is going to be 2. So I'll erase that, and I'll put a 2 here. Okay. And then uh, we have a g of 4 here. So here's g, here's 4, g of 4 is a 1. So this will be a 1 plus 1. Okay, so uh, I think that's good. Uh, now let's go ahead and compute the numbers here. So uh, 2 times negative 2, that's going to be a negative 4. And then 1 plus 1 is going to be 2. Minus, and then I have a 2 times 2, which is going to be 4, right? So minus a 4, all divided by... 1 plus 1 is 2, so 2 to the power of 2. Okay, uh, final steps here, I have a negative 8 minus a 4 divided by 4. That's going to be a negative 12 divided by 4, and a negative 12 divided by 4 is going to be a negative 3. So negative 3 is your final answer there.